This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. Hello and welcome everybody to the Oklahoma Sports Network's continuing coverage of the 2024 Oklahoma High School Basketball Playoffs. We are in Piedmont tonight and we are going to be treated to a absolute battle tonight. Two teams good enough to go the distance and we get to see it right here. A spot in the state tournament on the line here in Piedmont. It's the Crossing Christians Knights and the Carl Albert Titans on a Friday night in Piedmont. The calendar has shifted to March. The games become more important. We're down to the nitty-gritty now. Only good teams left. Only teams who are capable of going the distance left at this point in the postseason. And these two teams who have already played twice this year, had a couple of great matchups, are set tonight for the rubber match. And the winner gets to go to the Lloyd Noble Center next week and play in the state tournament. Not much more you could ask for if you're a fan of high school hoops. This one is going to be fun. We're glad you found us wherever you did on a Friday night. Settle in. It's going to be a good one. Josh Calloway with you in Piedmont. Ileana Berryhill on the camera for us. So the situation is like this for these two teams. You win, you move on to the state tournament. It is that simple. You don't have to do anything else. There's no other hurdles to jump through, nothing else you need. You win, you're in to the final eight at the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman next week. If you lose, though... You're not done because these two teams both won their regional last week. They have bought themselves the cushion that comes with having two chances to win one to get to state. If you lose this game, you will turn around right back here tomorrow, 6 o'clock tip in Piedmont against the winner of the game that will be on this floor next, which is Santa Fe South in El Reno. But, of course, both these teams don't want to have to go through that. They want to get the job done now and punch their ticket to the state tournament tonight, rest easy tomorrow, and gear up for the state tournament opener next Thursday. Going to be fun. These two teams have already played twice this year. They split them. The stage is set for what should be an epic night here in Piedmont, and we are very, very excited to get to bring this game to you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick timeout here. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups, and we'll have the basketball in this heavyweight fight with the winner moving on to the state tournament next week. It's Crossings Christian. It's Carl Albert. Lineups tip other side of this break on the Oklahoma Sports Network. College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part
part-time service where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. All right, back in Piedmont, Josh Calloway with you getting set to get this one going. Let's go ahead and dive right into the starting lineup presented by Dynamic Health Clinic. At Dynamic Health Clinic, Dr. Kaufman specializes in athletic injuries and is able to get athletes back in action very quickly using a system called Advanced Muscle Integration. Play better, recover faster at Dynamic Health Clinic. Projected starters first for the crossings. Christian Knights are going to be the road team here tonight in Piedmont. Number one, Cal Furnish. He's a six-foot even junior. Number 14, Cam Parker, a 6'7 junior. Number 23, Mac Goodell is a 6'1 senior. Number 24, Evan Krotz, a 5'11 senior. And then number 30, Phoenix Woodson rounds it out, a 6'8 sophomore. The Crossings Christian Knights are 18-6 coming into play tonight and are coached by Sean Schenk. For the Carl Albert Titans, we're going to introduce now in their home unis. Number one is Jaden Hopkins, a six foot one sophomore. Number 12, Hutch Russell, a 5'9 senior. He's played in about a million of these types of games. Number 21, Ryan Reynolds, the 6'5 senior. Number 22, Quincy Hopkins, a 6'3 senior. And then number 23, Marcus James will round it out, the six foot four junior commit of the University of Oklahoma in football. And the Titans enter play tonight 21 and 4. It's been a fantastic season. And her coach, of course, by the legendary Mr. J. Price. We mentioned these two teams already met twice this year. December 5th, Crossings Christian won it 68-54. to The Titans got them back on February 8th, winning a barn burner 51-49. So these two teams have already played a couple of great games. They split them, and we're excited to see what they do in the rubber match here tonight in Piedmont. Crossings Christian, like we said, is going to be the road team tonight in this neutral site game. Doesn't mean much beside what uniform you're wearing and what bench you're sitting on. The Knights are in their road black uniforms with the cursive Knights across the chest, the silver numbers on the front and back. Titans in their home whites with the red Titans on the chest and the red numbers on the front and back. And we are very pumped to bring this one to you. Should be a fantastic game. It's been an epic couple of meetings, especially that last one just about a month ago, a little less than a month ago, and we're hoping for more of the same tonight. Titans win the tip. They're going left to right from our vantage point up above the court. Here at the Piedmont Wildcat Athletic Center. So glad you could be with us. Settle in, folks. We've got a great one for you. Winner to the state tournament in Piedmont. First possession for the Titans. This is Hopkins, the older of the two. We got Quincy, number 22, Jaden, number one, in the starting five for the Titans. Here's Hutch Russell, who, like we said, has played in so many of these big games in multiple sports. You know, he's not going to be rattled by the moment. Turnaround shot for Marcus James, and the Titans are on the board first. What a year it has been for Marcus James. Obviously, like we said, football commit of the University of Oklahoma helped the Titans win a state title in football this year. Wasn't going to play basketball. Joined the team midseason. Now he's in the starting five and a huge part of what Carl Albert's trying to accomplish. But a quick response for the Knights as the other way in putting that one home was Parker. And we're back even to a piece just about a minute in here on OSN. Hopkins feeds off to Hutch Russell. Bounce pass underneath to Quincy Hopkins who, like we said, the older of the two, the senior. And all these seniors for the Titans obviously played a key role on that runner-up team last year that was so close as Russell fires a three and it rims off. Titans were so close to a state title last year, losing in overtime in the state championship to Dell City. We had that game on OSN, an absolute epic collision. Trying to get back there and this time finish the deal. But the Knights aren't going to make it easy. Another bucket for Parker. And Crossings Christians in the lead for the first time, 4-2, 6.25 to go in the opening quarter. Here's Quincy Hopkins in the corner, fires underneath to James Pass, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Carl Albert, good defense there. Cam Parker off to a great start, a couple of buckets, and making his force felt on defense there. Inter uh, pass intercepted off the inbound. This is Goodell starting the break. Behind the back pass, right back to him from Farnish. Pass underneath to the big Phoenix Woodson. His shot threw some contacts up and good. 6-0 run for the Knights. Phoenix Woodson comes checked in at six foot eight, just a sophomore in the starting five for the Knights. He's going to be a problem for other teams in 5A for two more full years after this one. Shot for Hopkins doesn't go. Pinball's out to Russell. His floater rims off. So some unfortunate bounces for Russell early. And we have a whistle and a foul. Going to go on the Titans. Or, excuse me, on, no, yeah, on the Titans. Okay, it looked like Hopkins was headed to the free throw line there. Threw me off. The foul is called on, looks like, James. That's his first. 
got a great crowd in here tonight, by the way. Lots of fans made the trip here. It is not a packed house, but a lot of people here uh, for this early 6 p.m. tip. That shot does not go for Krotz. Titans have it going back to the way, down by four. Here's Hutch Russell, hands off Ryan Reynolds. He can really shoot it. There you go, Clackums. Bobby Lewis insurance three ball, our first of the day. And it's a three ball for Ryan Reynolds, who when he gets hot, he can shoot him with anyone in the state. And you saw it there as he knocks down his first triple attempt. And the Titans are back within one, 6-5. Woodson on the wing, guarded by Marcus James. Feeds it off to Farnish. Farnish, bounce pass to the Woodson, cutting to the hoop. James goes flying over him. And Marcus James, first off, thankfully he's all right. That was a, quite the tumble he took. And that's going to be two fouls on obviously a very key piece of what the Titans are hoping to accomplish and want to do. So that's two fouls on James. He'll have to sit. Not something you want to do if you're Coach Price, but no choice. Off the bench in his spot comes the sophomore LeBron Royal, who we didn't see much as a freshman. Not unexpected. A lot of freshmen don't play, but didn't see much last year in that run, but he's been a big part of the team off the bench this year. 6-5, Knights lead, 4.55 to go in the first. Here's Parker, rocket pass to Woodson, deflected and stolen. Turnover, Titans got the break. Here's Hopkins racing down the floor. He's athletic as anyone. Oh, went to the rim, couldn't finish it. He did the hard work, but couldn't quite get it to roll home, but does a good job of sticking with it, gets the tie up, and the arrow will give it to crossings, it looks like, but it's still a good job to flip it nonetheless, staying with it after his miss. So the Knights are still clinging to a one-point lead, and they have the basketball back, 440 to go in the first. This is Furnish walking it up. Junior point guard for Crossings Christian. This program that's so good year in, year out. Woodson for three, air balls it long. Parker able to save it. Now it's pinballing around, ends up in the hands of the sophomore Royal. Titans get another stop. Their uh, defense seems to have settled in a little bit these last few possessions. Now they try to get the lead back. Here's the younger Hopson, Hopkins. And he's bumped and fouled. Be the first one against the Knights. It'll go on Furnish. You kind of see in the corner of the screen there the crossings student section. All decked out in camo. That's the theme uh, of the night, evidently. And they are here. They came out, and they're rowdy early in this game. Titans keep it after the foul on Furnish. Turnaround shot for Hopkins. Can't quite get the roll. Rebound loose. Ends up in the hands of Woodson who hands it off to Furnish and the Knights have it back going the other way midway point of this first quarter step back three for Furnish oh boy look good a little too much rebound Hopkins Titans going back the other way down by one first quarter in this 5A area game on the west side of the bracket winner of this one moves to the state tournament next week at the LNC shot won't go for Jaden Hopkins he's bumped and fouled and he will head to the free throw line our first look at the Tooney Buys Houses Charity Stripe. Tooney Buys Houses, we buy homes in any condition. If you or someone you know needs to sell a home for any reason, please call us today for a cash offer, 405-931-3046. First one rolls off for Hopkins. Make sure we also thank our first quarter sponsor, which is Rose State College. Saving money on college is easy at Rose State. Concurrent enrollment allows students to earn up to 27 tuition-free hours of college credit while still in high school. Apply today at rose.edu. Slash concurrent. So split the trip for Jaden Hopkins. We're tied back up six apiece. 3.43 to go in the first quarter. Furnace crossing the midcourt logo with the Piedmont Wildcats P. Great facilities here at the Wildcat Athletic Center. No stranger to hosting these postseason games. As they were whistling a foul. And that'll send Woodson now to the free throw line. The Tooney Buys House's cherry stripe with three and a half on the first quarter clock. Third foul on Carl Albert in this first quarter. That's the first one on Royal. The first two on Marcus James, if you tune in a little late. Not what you want if you're the Titans. Marcus James in some early foul trouble. As he picked up two, we'll see how long Coach Price keeps him on the bench. You figure he's at least done for this opening quarter and uh, possibly into the second quarter, depending on maybe the way things are going. Second free throw for Woodson. He's got it. So a split trip right there for Woodson. And the Knights are back ahead by 1-7-6. Jaden Hopkins bringing it down the floor for the Titans. Gives it up to Ryan Reynolds. Already has a three in this game. Hutch Russell, who's had a couple of unlucky bounces. He can shoot it from there as well. Reynolds now has it. Turnaround shot. 
comes up just short. Tried the Dirk Nowitzki move, didn't get it. Rebound, though. Hopkins put back, no, and he's fouled. So you're seeing the impact that Quincy Hopkins can have on the game. Not the biggest guy ever. He's not small by any means, 6'3", but he has gotten athleticism, can jump out of the gym, makes him so tough on the glass. First freak, though, good. That foul, by the way, was on Furnish as well. That's his second. So that's two now on Furnish. So each team with a key guy in foul trouble. But it looks like Coach Shank is going to keep him in the game, at least for now. Russell out of the game, by the way, for the Titans. Into the game for the first time is Steven Anderson, number five. He's also a sophomore off the bench, measured at six foot one. It's a split trip at the line again. That's been a theme early, and we stay tied at seven. Under three to play in the opening quarter. Parker underneath to Woodson. Hopkins guarding him, a five inch differential in height but he poked it away from him got the turnover here's Hopkins racing down the floor he'll hand off Reynolds who wanted it but instead he'll give it up Hopkins pump fake pulls up at the free throw line cash money and the Titans are back in the lead they led 2-0 and now have it in front again by a bucket at 9-7 2.30 to go in the opening quarter here's Furnish off the screen from Parker behind the back pass that was slick Parker for three side of the rim no good rebound Anderson to start the break for the Titans who lead by two Guarded by Furnish, who's playing with those two fouls. And as I say, that looks like a couple of Knights are set to check in on the next dead ball. Anderson checking with Coach Price and the Carl Albert coaching staff. He'll drive right at his man, Furnish. Shot is up, won't go. Royal, a great rebound and travel there. A little shuffling of the feet. It's the right idea for Anderson with Furnish guarding him. Take it right at him with those two fouls. Force the issue a little bit. So even after the two subs, Furnish is staying in. Off the bench for Crossings Christian comes number 12, Braden Buckingham. He's a six-foot sophomore. Number 24, oh, excuse me, number 10, excuse me, off the bench. Coleman Ridley, a 6'2 junior. And a whistle and a foul here. Going to go on the Titans. That'll be their third. Uh, excuse me, that's their fourth, actually. First one on Hopkins. Just on the floor. Inbound pass almost stolen by Hopkins, but able to save it was Buckingham. Tight, uh, Knights can reset their offense a bit here. This is Kratz with it. Goes to his left for a moment. He'll give it up to Furnish. Furnish puts on the floor. He sees Elaine. Goes all the way to the rim. Rocket pass underneath to Woodson off the fingertips. And out of bounds. A turnover. Good defense there by the Titans. Not a bad pass by Furnish by any means, but it was a small window there, and Woodson couldn't quite handle it. So Titans get it back. Up by two, 90 seconds to play in the first quarter. Fun start to this one, as you expect. Two teams, like we said, split the first two meetings. Titans winning the most recent of which back on February 8th by two, 51-49. Here's Hopkins going to go to the rim. Layup attempt rolls off. Rebound Royal. Kick back out. Quincy Hopkins for three. Back iron, no. Got his own miss. Another second chance opportunity from the elbow. That won't go. So three good looks on that possession for Carl Albert, but no points. And the Knights have it back with a minute to play in the quarter. But poking that loose and getting a steal. Oh, spoke too soon as he lost out of bounds. That's Brandon Rogers off the bench. Another one of these young guys for the Titans who's playing big minutes off the bench. They have three sophomores. Royal, Rogers, Anderson. Just pieces of the team moving forward that are playing big minutes as sophomores off the bench for this team right now. As that three doesn't go for Woodson. And the Titans have it back, still leading by two. 50 seconds to go in this first quarter. Both teams still trying to feel each other out a little bit in this big spot. Like we said, big crowd in here tonight in Piedmont. Great energy in this arena. And we're set up for a great battle all night long. Here's Hopkins going right at his man. It's Kratz. And he's bumped and fouled by Woodson. And that's going to send the younger of the two Hopkins brothers, Jaden, to the line who's also a sophomore, obviously, in the starting five for the Titans. Last year as a freshman, would play big minutes. It stretches and certainly got his feet wet in that state tournament. A dynamic young player who obviously has uh, got a much bigger role this year in the starting five. As he hits the first one, makes it 10-7. The foul, by the way, on Woodson, his first Something to keep an eye on. Certainly a guy that can change the math and the dynamic quite a bit if he were to get into foul trouble with his sight, uh, size at six foot eight. 
Second free throw rolls off. Titans will stay ahead by three as we hit the final half minute of the first quarter. We'll see how aggressive the Knights want to be here or if they maybe consider holding for the final shot of the quarter. Certainly could at this juncture, and it looks like that's probably the plan. Coach Schenk shouting out some direction behind his point guard, Furnish. Ten seconds to play in the quarter. Going to his right. Good screen. Uh, I spoke a little too soon as Rodgers came across and bumped him. I, I felt like that was a great idea. He kind of trapped him on the timeline. We got a little too into him, and instead it's a cheapy foul. It's going to result in free throws because the Knights are in the bonus. So the foul on Rodgers is first, and with 8.3 seconds on the clock, it looks like Furnish can pull the Knights within one if he can hit these two foul shots. He's got the first at the Tooney by his house's charity stripe. Entertaining start to this one. One of three games on our airwaves tonight on OS. And we also have another one in action as we speak. Midwest City and Guthrie. That's another really good one going down over at Edmond North High School. As the free throw is good. So a two for two trip there for Furnish. Pulls him within one. Again, 8.3 seconds here for the Titans to try and get down and do something. Hopkins with it. He'll pass it left side to Russell. Five seconds. Back to Hopkins. He'll cross half court. Can he get a good look? Hopkins behind the back dribble. Going to have to hurry. I think that would have counted, but it doesn't matter. It goes high off the glass and no good. And that's the end of the first quarter. Fun start to this one. After eight minutes, it's the Titans 10, the Knights 9. Second quarter on the way in this pivotal game in the 5A playoffs. Next on the Oklahoma Sports Network. If you've lived in Oklahoma long enough, you'll know that we get extreme weather. With that extreme weather comes hail damage to your roof and an insurance claim. When that happens, there's not a better company to deal with on your insurance claim than Cantrell Roofing and Construction. Since 1987, Cantrell Roofing and Construction has proven to be the best in the business. And always remember, God hail, call Cantrell. in Piedmont. Josh Calloway with you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Ileana Barry Hill on the camera for us tonight. Fun first quarter. The Titans lead it 10-9 after one. As we get back to it, second quarter sponsor. See him up in the corner there. Casa Juanito. Casa Juanito, a quick service restaurant offering fresh and flavorful Fiesta meals in Dell City since 1976. Located in 4718 Southeast 29th Street in Dell City. Back to it. Titans with the first possession of the second quarter, leading by one. Hutch Russell in the corner. Long pass to Anderson on the far side. So far for Carl Albert, their offensive rebounding, the difference. Small difference, right by one, but the difference. Find themselves lots of second and third chance opportunities in that first quarter. Pass to Hopkins on the free throw line. Lost his dribble. That's just good active hands on defense. Good tell if that was Furnish or Lacell, who just came in to start this quarter, but somebody got a hand on it. Now, great ball move for the Knights. Leads to an open three in the corner for Goodell, but he just didn't hit. That was beautiful moving. The ball never touched the floor to get a good look, but didn't hit it. Meanwhile, Jaden Hopkins said the way. His shot tried to bank it. No good. Rebound, Furnish, who still have those two fouls. Coach Schenk trusting his guy, the junior Furnish, and he hasn't burned him yet. Still with two. Pulls up from the... Free throw line, and he's got it, and the Knights are back ahead, 11-10. Into the game, by the way, for crossing some more subs. They're going deep into the bench in this first half. Number 25, Jonah Kelly into the game. And I mentioned Caden Lazel, 6'4", junior, number 13, also subbing in on that last dead ball. That's another turnover here. Titans getting a little sloppy with the basketball, as that was Marcus James who couldn't handle it. Back in with those two fouls. Furnish will fire from way deep. Back iron, no. Rebound loose, ends up with the Knights' second chance for crossings. 6.27 to play in the half. Furnish going to his left. He'll take it right as his defender, Russell. Kick out. Open three at the top for Lazel. Rolls off. Tip back attempt for Parker. No. Another look at a tip back. No. He was all over it, but just couldn't finish. And Coach Jay Price not thrilled with the way this second quarter has started. Wants to take a timeout and talk about things. I think that's probably a good timeout. You got five of them. 
you might as well go ahead and use one here when it feels like right now your team's getting a little bit outworked in some key areas. I think it's a good timeout by Coach Jay Price. So while we have the timeout, like we said, Midwest City Guthrie's in action right now. That's a great game going on over at Emmon North. That's the same situation as our game here, winner of the state tournament, loser. We'll have to turn around and try to play tomorrow. We do have another game coming up later tonight with Dell City and Elgin. That's an all-OSN affair between the Eagles and the Owls. That game tonight at 7.30, an elimination game with the winner staying alive to tomorrow. The loser's season will be over. Jordan Ray will be on the call for that one over there at Edmond North. So I suggest after this game finishes up, you flip on over there. That should be a fun one between a couple of OSN schools as the defending champs, Dell City, tries to keep their season alive at least another day. Back to action here in Piedmont. 11-10 lead for crossings. Hopkins gives it up to his brother. Back to Hutch Russell at the top of the key. He'll drive. Bounce pass to Marcus James. Deflect out of bounds. It'll stay at this end. Ryan Reynolds back in the game for the Titans. He replaces Steven Anderson. Reynolds, Hopkins, Russell, all guys who played big, big minutes were huge parts of that team last year for the Titans that was ever so close to winning a state championship. Bad pass by Marcus James is stolen, but Hopkins almost got it right back. Now the ball's still loose. Parker ends up with it after all that, and Crossings has the basketball. Kick out left side to Kelly to the top, Goodell. Furnish has it now out near half court. He'll reset the offense for Crossings. Going to his left, kick out in the corner, open Attempt for Lazel, but instead he gives up to Parker. Parker passing the corner to Furnish. Furnish trying to get it back to Parker. Got around his man, Marcus James. Good bounce pass, but it's blocked from behind by Reynolds. And they're going to say his foot was on the baseline. It'll stay at this end. That was great ball movement by the Knights. Looked like it was going to lead to a wide open layup for Parker, but Reynolds a good job crashing in from behind to block it. But the possession stays with crossing. Furnish, pull up jumper, no. But another opportunity. Offensive rebounding was so good for Carl Albert in the first quarter. This quarter is favoring crossings and at least to a three ball for Jonah Kelly. And the Knights are ahead by four, 14-10. Carl Albert has still not scored in this second quarter, by the way. Now three minutes into it. And the Knights are back ahead by two possessions at 14-10. Here's Russell on the wing to the top Hopkins. Hopkins to Reynolds in the corner. Reynolds gives it back to him. Jaden and Quincy kind of talking to each other a little bit there. Now Jaden shouting out some direction. Hopkins surveying the floor right side to Quincy. Titans in no hurry here, trying to make sure they get a good look. Offense obviously has been stagnant in this quarter. Russell from way deep. Holy moly. Front of the rim, no good. Rebound, though. Reynolds, second chance for the Titans. Hutch Russell, we said he will fire from deep. We were not kidding. It's his heels nearly on the midcourt logo here in Piedmont. Didn't hit it, but Carl Albert gets it back. Pull up for Hopkins in the corner to Jaden. Jaden trying to spin loose off his defender. He'll take it now to the rim through some contact. And he's going to say he's fouled, but they're going to say no shot. Foul on the floor. So both teams kind of racked up the fouls a little bit in that first quarter. That's our first foul of the second quarter, nearly halfway through it with 4-12 to play in the half. It was just on the floor. The foul was called against Furnish, though. And that's his third. So that's a huge foul against the very important Cal Furnish. Staying in the game with three fouls. Keep that in mind. Top here is Hopkins. He'll drive, pull up just in front of the free throw line. Got it. Nice shot by Quincy Hopkins. Gets the Titans back within two at 14-12. 354 to play until halftime. Here's Furnish. By the way, they moved that foul around a little bit on the scoreboard, so I'm not 100% sure that was on Furnish. A few different numbers flashed up there. So he may still have two. We'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, another three here for Kelly. That was a heat check. Didn't go. Hit that nice one earlier. That one hit nothing but the floor. And the Titans will have it back, trailing by two. Woodson back in the game for crossings. Also back in comes Evan Krotz. So a couple of starters back in, replacing Lazel and Kelly. Titans, meanwhile, have their starting five on the floor. And Brandon Rogers. Starting five on the floor, Sands Hutch Russell. Rogers in his place. Here's Hopkins at the free throw line. He likes to shoot from here and he fires away again. He's got it again. 
That's a third pull-up jumper for Hopkins right around the paint. He's hit them all. And we're back tied 14 all, 313 to play in the first half. This, team, this game has every bit of the intensity we thought it would. Furnish pulls up. He's got it. Cal Furnish has not subbed out in this first half and is putting himself together a nice first couple of quarters. And the Knights are back ahead by two. Ryan Reynolds with it. Feeds it off to Rodgers. Rodgers to his right. Gives it back to him. Reynolds hit one earlier from about this spot. Instead, he'll give it up to Hopkins. Hopkins pulls up from the free throw line. Oh, he's hot. He's hot right now. Another pull-up jumper for Hopkins. That's his spot. That's where he makes a living. And he's got another one to go. Putting together a really nice first half as Quincy Hopkins. Meanwhile, Furnish goes to the rim hard and gets fouled with 2.32 to play in the half. And Furnish will head back to that Tooney Bias House's charity stripe to try and put crossings back in the lead. Boy, Quincy Hopkins was obviously so good all year last year. It was a big part of why Carl Albert got to the championship game in the first place, but he was tremendous in the championship game. And you remember, had that look in overtime that didn't fall for him, but he had played an amazing game before that as the free throw first one for Furnish is good, puts crossings back in the lead. But he has been on a mission this year to get Carl Albert back to that stage, back to that game. Both free throws good for Furnish. The foul, by the way, was on Marcus James. That's his third. Not ideal in the slightest for the Titans. He subbed out. Royal replaced him. And we're definitely not going to see Marcus again until the second half. He's got to be real careful the rest of the way with now three fouls. Not ideal at all if you're the Titans. Who trail by two right now. 2.15 to play in the first half. Rodgers going to his right. He'll hand it off to Jaden Hopkins. And a little stutter step move. What's the call here? Looks like it's going to be a foul on the Knights. The crossing's faithful, which is on that far side. We're on the Carl Albert side of the gym, and the Knights student section was pleading for a travel call there. Didn't get it. Instead, it's a foul on the Knights, and the Titans keep the possession. Final two minutes of the first half. Here's Quincy Hopkins at the top. He's guarded by Goodell. Underneath to Roger, tried to bounce it to Royal, but a kickball will keep it down here. Stick with us at halftime, by the way. We'll recap the first half. We'll peek in on some scores elsewhere in the 5A postseason that are in action as we speak. We'll also let you know what the schedule is tomorrow. We've got a ton of not just basketball, but sports in general on the network tomorrow all over the place. We'll talk about that at halftime as well. So stick with us for that. Royal bounce pass to Rodgers, up and under move. Doesn't go, but he's hitting foul. Good ball movement there for the Titans, and it's going to result in a couple of foul shots at the Tooney Bias House's charity stripe for the sophomore Brandon Rodgers. And he can tie this game back up with 141 on the clock if he can hit them both. First one back iron, no good. The foul, by the way, on Krotz, his first team third. So like we said, both teams got to the bonus in that first quarter, but neither team there yet with only 90 seconds to play in the first half, but got to capitalize when you get there. Rodgers misses them both. Crossing stays ahead by two. This is Krotz with the basketball. He gives it up to Goodell. Goodell guarded by Reynolds. Coach Schenk stamping on the floor, wanting some action to get started. Somebody missed uh, something there because Coach Schenk was very upset. Still is. Here's Furnish. Can take it all over to the rim. Left-hand finish. Couldn't quite get the roll, but a late whistle and a foul on Carl Albert. The foul is going to go on Rodgers, and it's going to send Furnish back to the line. And that's not the guy you want to foul right now. He's been very good at the free throw line so far tonight for the Knights. Trying to add to it, and he stays good. As he hits the first one. Three-point lead, 19-16 with 1-16 to play in the first half. Second one will go, four-point lead. Again, the winner here moves to the state tournament next week at the Lloyd Noble Center. The loser not done, but their season will be on the line tomorrow against the winner of the game on this floor next, which is Areno and Santa Fe South. Hopkins at the elbow, pulls up. Not going to go. He's been real good from that area so far tonight, but didn't get that one. And the Knights have it back in the final minute. Oh, by four, but there you go. Quincy Hopkins forced a turnover and the slam. 
That's what he does. Missed a shot. I'll just force a turnover and hammer it instead. So the dunk for the Titans moves them back within two with 42 seconds to play in the first half. What a huge play that is. Instead of a four-point game and maybe the final shot, it's back down to two. Just feels so different. Pull up from the elbow is good. That's a great shot by Goodell. Boy, a tough shot, but a great one. And it puts the Knights back ahead by four, 25 seconds to play in the first half. Hopkins will walk it up. Looks like Carl Albert will probably take the final shot of the half here. And barring something crazy, crossings, Christian's going to have a lead at the half. Hopkins checks with his bench. Final 10 seconds of the first half here in Piedmont. Hopkins, crossover move, gives up to Reynolds. The sharpshooter for three. Side of the rim, no good, couldn't quite get the roll. And that will end the first half here in Piedmont. A very competitive, like we would think, dogfight first half. And the Titans, who led by one at the end of the first quarter, trail by four at the halftime break. All right, we'll step aside here for halftime for a few moments. We'll come back, we'll wrap up the first half of action. Like I said, we'll peek in on some other scores and let you know what the schedule looks like tomorrow as we got a whole lot of content and live sports for you on OSN tomorrow all over the place. We'll talk about that all next on the Halftime Report after this break on the Oklahoma Sports Network. At CFD, our mission is to deliver quality dentistry by providing big practice benefits with a little practice feel. Since 2008, we've updated our look, technology, and have added new smiles to our tenured staff to better care for you right here at home. Convenience for you is one of our biggest goals, and we often provide same-day treatment to minimize your time off work. We are open Monday through Friday to serve you. Visit cfdok.com for details. We look forward to seeing you at our big little practice. Start. I want to start a uh, car mechanic shop. Let's say we go to Scissor Tank. Ready to go get some coffee? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I think she was from One, Rose State. One, two, three. Congratulations, Rose State College graduates. College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. Back in Piedmont, we're at halftime right now between the Carl Albert Titans and the Crossings Christian Knights here on the Oklahoma Sports Network in this 5A Boys West Area matchup. The winner here to the state tournament next week at the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman. The loser, season not over, because a turnaround and final way to win tomorrow with your season on the line against the winner of the game will be on this floor next, which is El Reno and Santa Fe South. And let me tell you, I haven't had the pleasure of seeing Santa Fe South, but I did see El Reno last week against Midwest City. The Bombers won, but man, El Reno, they can shoot it. They can move the ball. Everybody can handle it. That's not a team you want to be playing with your season on the line. Let me just say that. So if that's the way it goes, I mean, it goes without saying you want to take care of business tonight, but that's a scary uh, 
proposition, I think, for either team if that's what it comes down to tomorrow. So these two teams, they want to get to the LNC now, not let it come down to tomorrow. That, that's for certain. Great first half. Everything we kind of thought it would be, very competitive, physical, lower scoring, a big part of that, just the intensity of the game, the moment, the pressure of the possessions become more valued. That tends to make these types of games this late in the postseason a little more low scoring uh, from time to time, so not totally uncommon there as the Titans trail by just four. Very fun first half, and uh, I think we're, we're in for a, a great finish here. It's going to be a game decided in the final moments. That is uh, close to a guarantee, I think, in my mind. Other scores around the state tonight. These are all games that will determine state tournament participants in action right now. Up in Tulsa, Holland Hall leading Collinsville 31-21. to So the Dutch, who we saw last year in the state tournament, are in good shape to get back there. They lead the Cardinals by 10 at the break in that one. Elsewhere on OSN right now, the Bombers are trailing 28-19 to to Guthrie. That's late in the first half. The Blue Jays, really, really tough. We saw them play these Titans on OSN earlier this year and went into the Titan Fieldhouse and won that game. They're really good. The Bombers are really good. That's a big game going down right now over them in North. And the Jays, with the lead at the moment at least, up by 9 Elsewhere up in Tulsa, Booker T and Edison Prep are locked in a good one. Edison Eagles ahead by 127-26 on top of Booker T at last to check in there. And, of course, you see our score. That's the four games in action right now. As far as the four games later, like we said, El Reno and Santa Fe South will be on this floor next. Elgin Devil City is going to be live on OSN. A couple of OSN schools going toe-to-toe. That will be coming up at 730 up in Tulsa. East Central and Tulsa Memorial will collide. Tulsa Memorial, another team that we saw at the state tournament last year. They're trying to get back. They'll have to win two. That starts with East Central coming up in just a little bit. And then Will Rogers and Sepulpa, the Chieftains, going toe-to-toe uh, there up there in Tulsa with their seasons on the line. That game also, of course, set for a 7:30 tip coming up a little bit later this evening. As far as what else we have on OSN for you, this is all what's coming up tomorrow. So first off, we got some baseball at noon. The baseball season is underway. Opening day, Dell City, Midwest City. Yours truly will actually be on the call for that one. Very excited to get some baseball in all of our lives. The weather's going to be really beautiful tomorrow. Should be a great day for baseball. That's at noon. That's your appetizer for the day because we've got a loaded slate of basketball to follow. On the girls' side, consolation games. These are all games, every single one you see on the basketball to determine spots in the state tournament. Dell City, Shawnee. I had the Eagles last night. They got a big win to stay alive uh, last night over Guthrie. They take on Shawnee tomorrow at 2 p.m. The Carl Albert Lady Titans will be taking on Altus in an all-OSN affair at 3.30. On the boys' side of things, if Carl Albert loses this game, they'll play, like we said, the El Reno Santa Fe South winner tomorrow at 6 o'clock back here in Piedmont. If they win, obviously they're into the state tournament. There will be no, ge- no game at 6, but we will have a game at 7 because it's going to be the Midwest City Guthrie loser versus the Dell City Elgin winner. There's three OSN schools in that mix. So we know we will have a game for you tomorrow night, 7.30. Again, every basketball game tomorrow is with a spot in the state tournament on the line. So a loaded slate tomorrow. We hope you join us all day long, literally from noon to, what, is that 9 p.m. or so? We've got you completely covered with high school sports in the mid Dell area. It's going to be a great day of sports all across the Oklahoma Sports Network tomorrow. We hope you tune in for as much of it as you can. If not, why not all of it? Just leave it running while you do whatever. You have it on your phone, you go shopping, whatever. Have us on. We're going to have you covered all day. All right, that's it for the Halftime Report. We'll take one last break here. We come back. It'll be time for the second half. Crossings Christian leads Carl Albert 22-18 after two. Third quarter on the way after this break on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part-time service where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. 
If you've lived in Oklahoma long enough, you'll know that we get extreme weather. With that extreme weather comes hail damage to your roof and an insurance claim. When that happens, there's not a better company to deal with on your insurance claim than Cantrell Roofing and Construction. Since 1987, Cantrell Roofing and Construction has proven to be the best in the business. And always remember, God hail, call Cantrell. In Piedmont, Josh Calloway with you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Ileana Berry Hill on the camera for us tonight as we get ready to start the second half of action from Piedmont. Who wants it? Anybody's ball game. Crossings Christian and Carl Albert. Night start with the ball as we get back to it, leading by four. This is Crotz with it. He'll go right to the rim. Hopkins just gobbled up his layup attempt and he just caught it. What a defensive play by Quincy Hopkins. Titans have it back down by four. Hopkins at the elbow. Pulls up from the free throw line. Rolls off. That's Quincy Hopkins' preferred shot. That's what he likes to do, that mid-range. Woodson can go to the rim. Hopkins poked it loose, but they're going to say he reached in. And that'll send Phoenix Woodson to the free throw line. So the first foul of the second half. The first one on Hopkins. Not a bad foul, really. Put Woodson at the line. That was going to be an easy layup. Just your first foul personally. And obviously on the team with 7.34 to go in the quarter. And he missed the first one. There you go. Paid off already. Make sure we get our third quarter sponsor in, which you see him up in the right-hand corner, which is Buffalo Wild Wings. 5,500 ticker diagonal in Dell City. Come to Buffalo Wild Wings. Support your favorite mid dell winter sports team. Download the team card on your phone. Show your waiter, and your team will get 10% of the proceeds. So the good foul proves to be a good foul as both free throws are missed. Titans stay down by just four, 22-18. Hopkins down low to Marcus James, who has been very limited in this game with three fouls already. Now Woodson just ties him up. Great defense by Phoenix Woodson, who has been really disruptive with that size in this first half. The arrow keeps it with the Titans. Russell will do the inbound, trying to get to Hopkins. Furnish poked it loose. It's been a great game for Furnish. Long bounce pass ahead to Goodell. Goodell to the rim. Oh, my gosh. That rejection by Hopkins was vicious. The rebound put back for Parker won't go, and he is fouled. Boy, Jaden Hopkins, who's only listed six foot one, just erased that layup attempt. But Parker, who's been really good on the offensive glass for the Knights tonight, Got it, ends up getting fouled, and wow, the foul is going to go on Marcus James. I didn't recognize that in live action. That's the fourth on Marcus James. So the foul trouble has just not been avoidable tonight for Marcus, who's such a big piece of this team. He's again going to have to head to the bench. His minutes have been extremely limited tonight, and that's that's the, the recipe for, I don't want to say an upset. I mean, they split the first two meetings. They are the higher they won the district, if you want to call it that. This, this feels like two pretty even teams, but you're certainly at a disadvantage in this type of game when one of your best guys is just having that foul bug hit him. And now Crossing's got their biggest lead of the night by six, 24-18, with seven minutes to play in the third. Here's Jaden Hopkins with the ball. He'll hand it off to Ryan Reynolds. He'll fire from three, comes up short, rebound Parker. Titans offense right now just a little out of sorts. And the Knights trying to take advantage. Rocket pass, good ball movement again. We've seen them do this. Parker on the elbow, hands off to Woodson. Woodson hands out. This is a really deep three for Goodell. The air ball is short. Woodson saves it, but the pass is stolen by Hopkins. Start the break for the Titans. Jaden Hopkins feeds off to Hutch Russell. 4-3 from the wing. Clackums! Hutch Russell for three. It's a Bobby Lewis insurance three ball. And the Titans, boy, do they need that. Back within one score at 24-21. What a huge sequence. That three goes in for Goodell. It's a nine. Pugolini said he airballs it, leads to a transition three the other way. And it's a one-score game. 
Here's Furnish at the top of the key, guarded by Hopkins, trying to get some room off and poked away from behind. Ends up right in the hands of Parker, who has a layup attempt, not go home. Rebound for Royal. So fortuitous bounce for crossings as Parker just found himself looking at an easy layup, but he missed it. Hopkins the other way to the rim. Offensive foul. With 5.54 to go in the third, they call an offensive foul on the Titans. It's on Jaden Hopkins. That's his second, and that's the team third already in this third quarter on Carl Albert. So some foul issues right now kind of all over the place for the Titans. Still three-point lead for the Knights. Parker's going to go over the rim. Scoop pass to Woodson who lays it in. That's a beautiful pass by Parker. And the Knights go ahead back again by five. Quincy Hopkins handling the ball for the Titans. Hand off Hutch Russell. He's going to fire from way deep. That rolls off. Russell can shoot from that far and, and shoot a decent percentage, but hasn't hit the couple he's tried tonight. Furnish, meanwhile, for three. Clackums. Oh, boy, what a big shot that is for Furnish. The lead for the Knights is suddenly back up to eight on that Bobby Lewis insurance three ball by Cal Furnish. And the Titans take a timeout with 5.13 to go in the third. As right now, the momentum firmly with the black and red at the moment. So a long way to go, but their biggest league of the night now leading by eight here in this third frame. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll stick here through it. As the Titans try to find a way to flip things back onto their side here. Still got plenty of time, but right now, Crossings has kind of just controlled this thing for the better part of the last two quarters. We're glad you could be with us however you are. We're live on YouTube tonight, Facebook, of course, OKSportsNet.com, our website. You can watch all of our content there. Our app's available on your phone, both iPhone and Android, as well as Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, and Apple TV. However you found us, we're glad you did. As the calendar shifts to March, the great time of the year for basketball, both high school and college, is just uh, an absolutely electric month from start to finish. And what a better way to kick off March than this kind of heavyweight fight with a spot in the state tournament on the line. So back to it. Hopkins pulls up mid-range jumper. Air ball is short. Boy, very rare to see that. And now a fast break opportunity for the Titans all the way down the floor. Layup is good and the foul. As Goodell puts it home with the foul on Russell. And the Knights now lead by double digits at 31-21 and can add to it at the line. Hutch Russell chasing him down, trying to break up that fast break. Ended up getting him on the arm, and Goodell finished it anyway. It's the first foul on Russell and the fourth team foul on the Titans. So the Knights, to make matters a little worse for Carl Albert right now, are in the bonus with just a shade under five minutes to play in this quarter. Royal out, Steven Anderson back in to replace him as the free throw is good. And the Knights lead it by 11, 32-21. We mentioned Crossings won the first meeting between these two back on December 5th. Carl Albert got him back on February 8th. But right now the Knights are controlling it as a fast break off a turnover leads to another layup for Goodell. Crossings leads it by 13. It's a 12-3 run to open the second half. And right now the Crossings end of this thing is rocking. The student section's into it and they're faithful, which there's a lot here, are up and loud as it's all nights at the moment. Titans got to flip it. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them as Carl Albert trails by 13, middle of the fourth, or middle of the third, excuse me, on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Do you want to start? I want to start a uh, car mechanic shop. Let's say we go to Scissor Kick. Ready to go get some coffee? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I think she was from One, Rose State. One, two, three. Woohoo! Congratulations, Rose State College graduates. Back in Piedmont, Josh Calloway with you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Right now, the Crossings Christian Knights. This game was a four-point margin at the half. They've ballooned their lead out to 13 with 4.42 to play in the third quarter. So a long way to go, certainly, but 
The Knights have come out swinging in this second half. How does Coral Albert respond? We're gonna find out right now. Hopkins with the ball. Feeds it over to his brother, Jaden. To the top, Steven Anderson. Anderson to his left, he'll take it to the rim. Right hand floater comes up just short, but that's a good look, but couldn't finish it. And crossing Christian has it back up by 13. Here's Furnish, hands it off to Krotz. Right side, Parker underneath to Woodson. Great movement without the ball, Woodson finishes it. The offense for crossings is just a beautiful to watch. The movement without the ball has been superb, and it's leading to a lot of good looks right now, especially down near the basket. And the biggest lead of the night grows up to 15, 36, 21. Russell at the top here. He'll drive down the paint. Scoop layup attempt doesn't go, but he's hit and fouled. And a good opportunity to get some points back at the line here for Hutch Russell with 349 to go in the cooldown. It's worth remembering. I wasn't on the call for it in that February 8th matchup. The great Kirk Norman was, I believe, with Jordan Ray. Crossings had themselves a nice, healthy lead in the second half of that game as well. Double figure advantage. And the Titans came back to win it. Now, it's hard to do that at any point, especially twice. And you know Crossing's going to be guarded against it after what happened last time. But it is worth keeping in mind as we move forward. This game very, very far from over. Russell did miss the first one. Second one will go down. Breaks the dry spell for Carl Albert offensively. Back to a two-touchdown game, 36-22. Reynolds back in the game for Carl Albert, as well as Brandon Rogers, number three. Furnish is going to go all over the rim. Scoop layup attempt won't go. Ball poke loose, and they're going to call a foul on Parker. Looked like Woodson might have had an easy layup if they had let that go, but the whistle goes against crossings. And that's the way you're going to have to get back in it right now if you're Carl Albert. Obviously, you've got to find some rhythm offensively. But it's not going to matter if you don't find a way to stack some stops. Good start there on that possession. They have it back down 14. Here's Hopkins driving. He'll pull up from the paint and Eric Got it. And there's a guy who can put a team on his back and just carry them back in. It would be Quincy Hopkins with the, what he can do all over the place, the way he can impact the game. And the lead's back down at 12, 36-24. 3.15 on the third quarter clock. Here's Parker at the top, guarded by Rodgers. He's got it, gives up left side to Woodson. Woodson goes to his right, he'll go down the lane. Contact with Reynolds, shot is up at the rim, won't go. Rebound out, picked up by Jaden Hopkins. Start the break for Carl Albert. Hands off to Ryan Reynolds, gives it to Hopkins in the corner. Thought about it, instead he'll put it on the floor. And gives it out to the top to his brother Quincy. He thought about shooting it, instead he'll stop it and reset the offense. 2.47 to go in the third. Rodgers goes his left off a screen from Jaden. Bounce pass to Quincy. Rocked a pass underneath to his brother. Hopkins at the rim here. Won't go through some contact. Thought he had a foul. There was a lot of contact there. Didn't get the whistle. Crossings has it back. Rocket pass ahead. Ball movement out. Here Lisa Goodell. Feed off Parker underneath Woodson. Woodson guarded by Reynolds. Gives it back out to him. And Crossings will set up some offense again up by 12. 2.20 to go in the third. The Knights in control, but can they keep it that way with a little over 10 minutes to play in this game? This would help. Three ball in the corner, comes up short. Rebound, Woodson though, put back is good. The second chance points have been really, really good for crossing tonight and just killer for Carl Albert as the three didn't go for Nate Rouse, the senior off the bench. But Woodson in there to clean it up, get the lead back to 14. Rodgers gives it up to Anderson. He'll fire from three. Oh, boy, halfway down and out. It looked good, but it rims off, and the Knights have it back with 1.40 to go in the third, up by 14, 38 to 24. Furnish off a screen from Woodson with 90 seconds to play in the frame. Woodson will fire from three. Oh, boy, that looked good, honestly, out of the hand, but it back irons off. Titans get a huge miss that they needed. That would have really hurt. Hopkins, meanwhile, he'll go for three. Side of the rim, no good again. And Woodson continuing to just gobble up rebounds right now for Crossings Christian, who have it back up by 14 with 108 to go in the third. Set to screen. First, going to go all the way to the rim. Couldn't get the roll. Woodson almost got the rebound, but lost out of bounds. So Carl Albert defense, a little better the last couple minutes, but they're not scoring enough to really make a dent in this deficit. And 
Now we got another whistle here as they're going to get a late sub here for crossing. A couple of late subs as Woodson comes off and Parker comes off. So a I think three subs there is into the game for crossings. They come number 10, Coleman Ridley, number 12, Braden Buckingham, and number 25, Jonah Kelly. So with 102, basically Coach Shank trying to steal some rest for his guys here, getting a lot of subs in before the fourth quarter push to try and get to that state tournament next week at the LNC. Here's Anderson, feeds over to Jaden Hopkins. Hopkins puts on the floor, gets up to the top to Quincy. Quincy, pump fake and drive. Going to go all the way to the rim here through some contact. And what's the call? It's going to be a foul here before the shot on the night. Just the team third. So no, no free throws. <clears throat> Looks like we lost our camera shot there. We'll get it back for you as soon as we can as we got 40 seconds to play in the third. Furnish bringing it down the floor. We apologize for the video loss here. We'll get it back here. Quarter's about to end. 30 seconds in the quarter. Going to go radio style here as we close out this quarter. Left side here with the ball is Buckingham as we have a whistle. Ileana. Ileana. We lost the, can you play with the, we lost the feed. Play with the, this. 20 seconds to play in the quarter. Russell for three. Clackums. Hutch Russell hits a big Bobby Lewis insurance three ball in the corner. Moves the Titans within 11 with 10 seconds to go in the third. Obviously, we recognize we lost the feed. We're going to try and get that back for you here as fast as we can. As a whistle is going to put Furnish at the free throw line here. And he hits the first one. Second free throw coming for Furnish. With the Titans, or the Knights, excuse me, leading by 12, now make it 13. And that's going to send Jaden Hopkins to the free throw line with 4.3 seconds to go in the quarter. Kind of need these if you're Carl Howard. Every point you can get right now to try and inch your way back in. First one up and good. Moves the Titans back within 12. And now mass subs as Coach Shank going to get all the starters back in for this one last offensive possession. 4.3 seconds on the clock in this third quarter. So the Titans have one big rally in them in the fourth. We're going to be finding out in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. I got a feeling this thing's going to get interesting before we're all said and done here. So Jaden Hopkins at the free throw line will shoot his second one to try and move Carl Albert within 11. And he's got it to go. So it's an 11-point game. Four seconds for the Knights. Racing down here is Furnish. He'll fire at the buzzer. This will count. And it's no good off the backboard. Coach Schenk and the Knights hoping for a foul there. Gonna have to take a lot to get in those kind of heave scenarios. And at the end of three, it's an 11 point game. Don't go anywhere, fourth quarter on deck. Somebody is going to the state tournament. We're gonna find out who after this break on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Yeah, you got it. Let's go. Seven. <laughs> what business do you wanna start? I wanna start a uh, car mechanic shop. Let's say we go to Scissor Tank. Ready to go get some coffee? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> She was from One, Rose State. One, two, three. Congratulations, Rose State College graduates.
All right, back in Piedmont, Josh Calloway, Ileana Berry here with you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're set up for a heck of a finish here. It's an 11-point game, but again, I got a feeling Carlber might make this a little interesting for us all said and done. Our four-quarter sponsor is Sherpa Moving. Sherpa Moving, a local full-service moving company. They offer packing, unpacking, special handling services. Their team is experienced and knowledgeable. Will help you get through what is usually a difficult time. Sherpa Moving for all your moving needs. 401 West 33rd Street in Edmond. Give them a call at 405-724-8750. So here we go. Fourth quarter. Crossings Christian leads it by 11. As we start this final frame winner to the state tournament. Next week, the LNC, and that's a great start to Crossings Christian trying to finish this thing off as Cam Parker, who's been really good tonight for Coach Schenk and the Knights, gets the buck to go in the foul, and it's a 13-point lead for Crossings with a free throw on the way. Free throw for Parker's up and good. So the three-point play complete, and just like that, the lead goes back to 14. Carl Albert's been kind of one step forward, two steps back this whole second half, trying to get out of this hole. They got quite a mountain right now. Rodgers for three, won't go. Rebound Parker again. And the Knights, who have just played a really good ball game tonight. And Cal Furnish, give him a lot of credit, picked up those two quick fouls. Coach Schenck trusted him. Hasn't been an issue. I don't think he's ever subbed out of this game. If he has, it's been for very brief spurts. He's been dynamite. Parker feeds off to Woodson. A couple more guys who have been dynamite. Parker loses it, but it's picked up and saved by Ridley. And Crossings is going to be in no hurry through the rest of this fourth quarter. They're going to milk these possessions as Furnish gets swatted by Reynolds, but Parker's able to save it again. Final seven minutes in Piedmont. Driving down the baseline. Good pass to Woodson to the rim. Couldn't finish it, but he's hit on the arm and fouled. With 6.54 to go. And time right now, a factor certainly for the Titans. With just under seven minutes, finding a way to mount this comeback, coming harder and harder to see. It's not over, but it's just getting tougher and tougher right now. As the lead goes to 15 for Woodson at the Tooney Bias House's charity stripe. Anderson back in the game here, places Hopkins. Again, it's not an elimination game. Loser here will turn around and have another shot to get to state tomorrow against the El Reno Santa Fe South winner. They'll be at 6 p.m. tip back here in Piedmont tomorrow. If it's the Titans, of course, we'll have that game for you on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Anderson going to his right at the top of the key. Hand off Hopkins with 6.40 to go. Driving at Furnish, lost the handle, ends up with Reynolds. This is a guy who can get you back in it quickly with his shooting ability. Hopkins tried to get it down low to roll. Not a bad idea, but didn't have enough mustard on the pass. Uh, just deflected and stolen by Parker. And right now, you just the question for the Titans is, do they have the offensive, I don't want to say firepower, because we know they do, but do they have the ability in this matchup to even get 15 more points on the board? The way Crossings has played defense, you're asking a lot with 6.05 left. It can happen. Especially with guys like Ryan Reynolds, Hutch Russell who can really shoot the ball. It's going to take a lot. Pull up jumper, good. Cal Furnish has just been so good tonight for the Knights. I think he's a clear leader in the clubhouse for that Eastside Church of Christ Player of the Game Award right now. As the Knights lead it by 17 here in Piedmont. Kick ball by Parker. This game was a four point margin at the half in favor of Crossings Christian. Since then, it's just been their game. Hopkins pulls up from the elbow. He's got it. Good shot by Hopkins. That's his money zone, that mid-range. Pulls Carl Albert within 15 again with five and a half to go. Right side, this is Ridley. He gives it in the corner to Woodson. Guarded by LeBron Royal. Parker at the top now by Hopkins. Again, Crossings is going to milk this clock every possession right now. They're in no reason to rush. Woods into the rim through some contact. Can't finish. Rebound attempt put back by Furnish. And we have whistles. Looks like another foul on Carl Albert. It's going to be the fourth on Rodgers. And it's going to send Woodson back to the line. Third team foul. 
And the two things that have been Carl Alberts undoing the most, I think, tonight, obviously the offense just hasn't been real great. You only have 31 on the board. But beyond just that, as the free throw goes in for Woodson, clearly the offensive rebound for crossings has just killed Carl Alberts. They've had so many second-chance opportunities as this game has gone on, third-chance opportunities, and then the fouls. They've put crossings at the line a lot in this game. And those two things go hand-in-hand, hand, obviously because a lot of the fouls are coming off of offensive rebound and then stick-back attempts where there's a lot of traffic down in the paint. And those two things are married together, and those will be the two things that Coach Price will be talking to his team about, I think, after this one, if they can't rally. Even if they do rally, but especially if they can, obviously. It's a bad turnover here. It's just miscommunication on the pass. With 5.06 left, you're seeing some frustration right now for the Titans as well. This Carl Albert team that has been so, so good. 21-4 record coming into play tonight. But one of those four losses was to this night's team. And they are now five minutes away from giving them a second blemish. At the free throw line, hit kick out to Krotz. Left-hand pass to Buckingham, who gives it back to him. He'll drive on Anderson, pull up. And now he'll go back out to his left and kind of reset some things offensively. Screen from Woodson. Bounce pass to him. Woodson gets up to Buckingham. Four and a half to play here in Piedmont. Crossings closing in on a berth in the state tournament. Deflected ends up with Woodson in the corner. Pump faking and driving now is Buckingham. Scoop pass to Parker at the rim is blocked, but they're actually going to say a tie-up. Good defense there by Carl Albert as Royal got in. Thought they might ding him for the foul, but they're going to say he got the ball. It's a tie-up in the arrow. Favors Carl Albert. So good defensive possession there. Russell back in the game along with Jaden Hopkins replacing Reynolds and Royal. 4-18 and counting to go. Hopkins at the top of the key. Puts on the floor. He'll pull up. Now hand it off to Rogers. He'll pump fake and drive. Rogers to the rim. Scoop finger roll layup. Good. That was pretty from Brandon Rogers. Titans back within 15 as we hit the midway point of the fourth quarter here in Piedmont. Woodson gives it up to Buckingham. A lot of contact, ball deflected and turned over. And this is what Carl Albert needs as now Hopkins is bumped and fouled. That's the first one on crossings Christian. But if you are trying to make a big comeback in the fourth quarter, that's the formula. Forcing turnovers. No way to quicker close a gap in basketball than getting the other team a little turnover happy. And all of a sudden you get five, six points real quick and you're looking up saying, hey, we're in this. Rogers for three. Clackums. There you go. Bobby Lewis insurance three ball for Brandon Rogers. And Carl Albert is within 12, 338 to go. So the Titans have one last push in. And Furnish to the rim couldn't finish it. Rebound comes out. Last touch by Crossings. Furnish has been dynamite in this game for Crossings. No doubt about that. He's, he's the clear front runner for Eastside Church of Christ player of the game right now. But I got to question that decision to go to the rim so early in that possession. I think that's what Coach Shank is kind of shouting at him right now, as a matter of fact. That saved Carl Albert a lot of time. That's what they want you to do. Hopkins going to go to the rim through some contact. He is bludgeoned in the paint. And Jaden Hopkins going to get to the line. So the last 30, 40 seconds is a dream for Carl Albert. They've whittled down a 17-point lead to five. And they have some free throws coming here at the Tooney Bias House's Cherry Stripe with 3.27 to go. Very little time has come off the last 45 seconds, and they've got a chance to get seven points in that stretch. All right. Like we mentioned, Carl Albert, a big comeback in the win over crossings in that fourth quarter when they met a little less than a month ago on February 8th. I'm not calling it for that yet. But a 7-0 run has Carl Albert within 10, 325 left. Hold on, hold on to your seats a little bit here. We still got some meat on the bone here in Piedmont. Furnish guarded by Rogers. He'll take it at him. Bounce pass to Parker. Parker to the rim. Can't get it to go. Another quick shot for crossings. Doesn't go in. These possessions are kind of head scratching right now. Hopkins to the rim. Right hand floater. It'll go. The lead is down to eight. It's a 9-0 run for the Titans. Under three minutes to play in Piedmont. Furnish crosses half court. This Carl Albert defensive pressure 
is getting stops and importantly quick stops the last few times down but can they hurry things now as crossings is slowing it down pass here on the right side to Krotz Krotz is trapped in the corner ball out of bounds it'll stay with crossings with 237 on the clock the lead that was 117 has been whittled down to nine in the last minute and a half or so but is the deficit too great now we have some whistles and some conversation as the officials going to talk to Krotz and Hutch Russell this game's physical these two teams have played twice already this year they know each other well a little bit of a budding rivalry between these two Woodson off the inbound, that was a bit of a dangerous inbound, but he saves it. Here's Krotz, and Russell's going to go ahead and foul him. It's not a bad idea. I mean, to go ahead and take a chance, see if you can't get a turnover. You foul him, you foul him. I mean, you're going to have to wrap these possessions up a little bit quicker. I mean, you can't just let them take a minute off every time. It makes sense. And now, with those four fouls, here comes Marcus James back into the game. This has been probably the biggest factor of the night. If you haven't tuned in for most of this, you tuned in late. Marcus James has been in egregious foul trouble all night. And he's back in now with four at 2.30 to go. Furnish loses it, gets it back. By the way, that was the fourth team foul on Carl Albert, so crossings will be in the bonus the rest of the way. Parker at the rim, layup is up and good. So a scoring drought ended for the Knights there. They're back ahead by 10, 2.13 left. Titans need buckets, and they need buckets quick. Anderson, he'll drive, right-hand floater is good. They're going to count that bucket and the foul. Wow. I didn't think they would. Continuation in high school hoops is very subjective. I mean, in high school or in NBA, I should say, they kind of give you anything even remotely close to continuation. In college, they don't give you anything. In high school, it really just depends on the official and the moment. And in that spot, Steven Anderson got bumped, finished his layup, and they gave it to him. So it's an eight-point game, and the free throw coming can trim it down to seven if he hits. 2.06 to play. Free throw for Anderson. Rolls in. The lead that was once 17 is now seven. Krotz with the basketball, and he's bumped and fouled. And Krotz will go shoot two at the other end. Again, not the worst thing, though. I mean, you need these possessions to be wrapped up quick. I mean, if they make all their free throws, there's so much, only so much you can do. But with no shot clock, you have to force the issue if you're Carl Albert. I don't think that's the worst idea in the world to be aggressive. If you foul, you foul. If you get the turnover, that's obviously great. So Cross will shoot two. The foul, by the way, was on Hop, or excuse me, was on Anderson. That's his first. Cross shooting two, first one no good. And this is the X factor with high school hoops. The pressure of big free throws late. First one, no good. And this is where we're really starting to see the rule change this year. As James comes out, Hutch Russell back in. The rule change this year to get away from the single and double bonus. Just go straight. Bonus means two. As they're both no good. An empty trip for crossings. We've got two minutes left. The Titans are only down seven. Anderson has the ball. He gives it up to Quincy Hopkins. Hopkins left side, Anderson for three, side of the rim no good, rebound is loose, scooped up by Jaden, second chance for the Titans. Kick back out to Hutch Russell, Russell with the top, Quincy they'll reset, 1.45 to go. Hopkins to the rim, pulls up, mid-range floater is good, but they're going to say no shot, no shot this time. The foul is on crossings, but no shot means no free throws either, because that's only the fourth foul. So what I say a moment ago, it's, it's very subjective at the high school level, kind of goes by the official in the moment. That wasn't that different than the one before, but this time Titans don't get the continuation. And we'll have to just reset their offense down by seven. Hopkins going to his right, now he'll back it out. 135 left. Hopkins pump fake and drive. Jaden Hopkins to the rim, through some contact, can't finish, but he's fouled. And going back to the Tooney Bias House's charity stripe is Jaden Hopkins with 131 to go. And a seven-point game. What a fourth quarter. I told everyone not to tune away, not to flip away. Hopefully you adhered my advice. I guess if you're viewing, you probably did. As the first week, those good were down to six, 50-44. Marcus Shane's back in. Hutch Russell replaces him. Jay Price doing a lot of substituting defense offense on these dead balls with Russell and Marcus James. Second free throw for Hopkins is good. 
The lead is down to five. 90 seconds to play in Piedmont. Buckle up. Krotz brings it down for the Knights. He gets across half court. Gets by Hopkins. He'll go to his right. He's going to try and go to the rim here. Turn around. His ball popped loose. Parker able to save it. Cam Parker's been the right guy at the right place a lot tonight. Comes up with the loose ball there. Pucked away again. It's loose. Ball's on the sideline. Kind of losing sight on it, honestly. There's a lot of bodies down there. He's going to say out of bounds and stay with the Knights. Nearly another turnover with 106 to go. That crossing student section, which is just a mass of bodies, kind of blocking that corner. I couldn't really see what happened there. I know you couldn't hardly see it either on the camera shot. We have a timeout taken just a 30 seconds. So catch your breath here. A little reset. 106 to go. It's a five-point lead for Crossings Christian. If you just tuned in, the Knights led this thing by 17. 17 in the fourth quarter. Carl Albert has whittled it all the way down to five in this winner to the state tournament game in the 5A Boys West playoffs. The loser is not eliminated. They'll turn around and play tomorrow at 6 p.m. right back here on this floor in Piedmont for a chance to still get to the LNC. But obviously, you don't want to come down to that. You want to get there now. And that's what these two teams are trying to do. And for pretty much the entire, especially the entire second half, it looked like that team was going to be crossing Christian, but Carl Albert, you just knew they weren't going to go down quietly. So 106 left. It's still Knight's ball. Inbounding in the corner. Gets it into Furnish, who's contacted. They're letting the contact go. Gets it ahead to Goodell. Goodell kick it back out. He could have shot it, but he kicked it out instead. We're in the final minute. Carl Albert's got to press the issue and, and force turnover. Free throw something. You need to do something. Again with the basketball. This is Krotz. Says we're down to 45 seconds and a foul. And Krotz, who missed two free throws earlier, will go back to the line. 46.9 to be exact on the clock. So the Tooney by House of Cherry Stripe is likely going to determine this game. If Crossings can make their free throws, they're probably going to get out of here. But if they miss, the door's going to be open. And another miss. These cross free throws aren't horrible bricks. They kind of just are spinning off right now. Doesn't matter, though, for the Titans. They'll take the miss however they get them. They don't have to be pretty or ugly. Just miss. Another defense for offense sub, or offense for defense in this case, I should say. Hutch Russell replacing James. Second free throw is good. So the lead goes up to six. Titans coming down the floor, down by a pair of three-pointers if they could get them. Hopkins spin moving the lane. Kick out in the corner to Russell. Bad pass. And a turnover. Not a terrible idea. Russell leaked down the corner. The way he can shoot it, that was not a bad idea, but the pass was just off. Titans were hoping for the deflection to be ruled. And that was the call. We have a whistle and a foul away from the ball on the inbound. That's going to result in more free throws for Crossings Christian. 39.5 seconds to go. The Titans have put together a ferocious rally to pull within as much as five. But is the mountain just a little too much with as much time as they had to work with? First one is up and good for Furnish. And the lead goes to seven, which is obviously a big benchmark because that gets you to three scores. Second one for Furnish, also good. Well, that's a guy you want shooting right now if you're crossing. Lead goes back to eight. Only 35 seconds left. Do the Titans have a ferocious rally in them? They're going to need to hit shots and hit them quick. Russell for three in the corner. Oh, boy, halfway down and out. Rebound Furnish. He's bumped and fouled and lets out a bellow as Crossings is close to finishing the job. First free throw for Furnish is good. The lead goes to nine. Boy, the Titans made this thing interesting down the stretch, didn't they? 
but it looks like the Knights are going to survive, but we'll see. Still 25 seconds to go. Hopkins crosses half court. Hands off to Anderson. Anderson, left-hand pass to Russell. Russell will drive. Step back three in the corner. Front of the rim, no good. Rebound Woodson. And with 12 seconds to go, crossings might be able to dribble this out. They're going to go ahead and foul him again with only 10.2. But the way Furnish shooting free throws, that's just giving him more points at this point. That kid is not missing. So with 10.2 seconds to go, I think it's safe to say that the Crossings Christian Knights are going to the state tournament. Congratulations to Coach Sean Shank. This is an unbelievably well-coached team, just fundamentally sound. They are fun to watch, and I look forward to seeing them next week at the LNC. As the first free throw is good for Furnish. As for the Titans, it's going to be painful. But the reality is you win tomorrow, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. But you have to win tomorrow. Hopkins will pull up from way deep for three. That's a microcosm of the night as that was halfway down and rolls off. And that's your ball game. The Crossings Christian Knights are going to the state tournament at the Lloyd Noble Center next week in Norman, Oklahoma. Congratulations to Crossings Christian. What a program, what a team. They win the rubber match with the Titans, 57 to 45. And will move on to the state tournament, three wins away from a title. And as for Carl Albert, they'll have to figure out a way to regroup, come back in less than 24 hours from now, and try to get back in the win column and get to the state tournament that way. Tough pill to swallow for the Titans, obviously, but like we said, you turn around, you win tomorrow, it doesn't matter in the end. Once you get a state tournament, there is no, you're in the quarterfinals, you reset, you start over. But a heck of a ball game, and Crossings wins it 57-45. to 45. Let's go ahead and do our East Side Church of Christ player of the game. The East Side Church of Christ in Midwest City believes in loving Jesus by loving their neighbors. They invite you to join them Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. for a Bible class with song and praise beginning at 10 a.m can't make it Sunday morning, you're invited to study with them at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Check out their live and recorded streams on YouTube and find more information on their website, eastsidechurchofchrist.info. The Eastside Church of Christ at 916 South Douglas Boulevard in Midwest City. Got to be Cal Furnish. No-brainer decision here. He was the guy who made the thing go all night for Crossings Christian. Don't get me wrong, Cam Parker was great tonight for the night, as was Phoenix Woodson, but Cal Furnish was just amazing all night. And he picked up those two fouls early. We thought maybe Coach Schenk would take him to the bench. He didn't. He trusted him, and he paid off that trust by playing well all night long despite being in that early foul trouble. And just to top it off, he had the big free throws late to seal the deal as well. Cal Furnish, no-brainer. Eastside Church of Christ, player of the game award for Crossings Christian. So, again, one last time to wrap up. Crossings Christian is going to the state tournament. Congratulations to Coach Schenk and that program. They earned it. They take the rubber match with the Titans here tonight. They'll go to the LNC next week. As for Carl Albert, they will be back tomorrow, 6 p.m. on this floor. They'll get the winner of the next game, which is going to be El Reno and Santa Fe South. Should be another great one, 6 p.m. tip here in Piedmont. If you win that, you get to go to the state tournament, and uh, that'll be a do-or-die season on the line spot tomorrow night. Going to be some great theater and a great game. We hope you tune into it on the Oklahoma Sports Network tomorrow night. I think that's it for us for now from Piedmont. Tune in to our final game of the day. Dell City and Elgin about to tip off over at Edmond North as those two teams try to keep their seeds alive. An elimination game there between the Owls and the Eagles. Join me tomorrow for baseball opening day. Dell City, Midwest City at noon. And then one more time, let's go ahead and get the schedule up there real quick for tomorrow. This is what we're looking at tomorrow. You can now can pencil in that Carl Albert game because they did, in fact, fall. There it is. Five games across two sports, two girls boy basketball games, two boys basketball games, and a baseball game. All four hoops games are for spots in the state tournament. What a slate tomorrow. We have a loaded day of sports all over the place. On the Oklahoma Sports Network, we hope you tune in all day long. It's going to be great. Tomorrow, starting with baseball at noon with yours truly, and the great John Keelty will be on the mic with me tomorrow. I hope you tune in and join us for that. That's it for now. We'll see you tomorrow for a full day of action. I'll see you tomorrow for baseball. If not, I'll see you next week at the Lloyd Noble Center for the state tournament. Going to be fun. Great time of year. The hoops rolls on. Dell City and Elgin coming up. Flip over there for Jordan Ray and that crew from Edmond North. One final time from Piedmont. Crossings Christian wins it 57-45. to Advance to the state tournament. We'll see you tomorrow for baseball and more hoops. The state tournament next week the Lloyd Noble Center. Billy on Berry Hill. I'm Josh Calloway signing off from Piedmont.
and the 5A boys high school basketball playoffs in the great state of Oklahoma on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time on OSN. Thanks for watching this presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network.